Today, I'll be talking on blood pressure, which is a part of the syllabus of physiological anthropology for BSc course. Well, first of all, let us try to understand what is blood pressure. Blood pressure, which is commonly symbolically denoted by BP, is the pressure exerted by circulating blood upon the walls of the blood vessels. You see, blood pressure usually therefore refers to arterial pressure of the systemic circulation. During each heartbeat, blood pressure varies between a maximum, that means systolic, and a minimum diastolic pressure. Now let us try to know what is mean by systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure. Systolic blood pressure is the maximum blood pressure in an artery when the heart muscles contract. In other words, the maximum pressure is the heart beat. Normally, it ranges between 100 to 130 mm of mercury and average is around 120 millimeter of mercury. On the other hand, diastolic pressure is the lowest blood pressure in an artery in the moment between beats. That means when the heart is relaxed. So the average is around 80 millimeter of mercury and the normal range is between 60 to 90. And the difference between this systolic pressure and diastolic pressure is known as pulse pressure. And it averages around 40 millimeter of mercury. Coming to another new concept, mean blood pressure, it is the average pressure throughout the cardiac cycle. And it is calculated as diastolic pressure plus 1 by 3 of pulse pressure. The average is 96 mm of mercury and the normal range is between 95 to 100. Therefore, a person's blood pressure can simply be expressed in terms of systolic pressure over diastolic pressure and is measured in millimeter of mercury, in short mmHg. For example, when we say 140 by 90, here 140 is systolic pressure and 90 is the diastolic pressure. So we have been often talking of high blood pressure and low blood pressure. Let us see the classification of blood pressure and what degree of systolic and what degree of diastolic pressure can be categorized as high or low blood pressure. So following the classification of blood pressure, according to American Heart Association, the adult, adult means 18 years and plus, that means more than 18 years of age, it can be categorized as hypotension if the systolic pressure is less than 90 and diastolic pressure is less than 60. And desirable blood pressure is 90 to 119 for systolic and 60 to 79 for diastolic. Then we have little bit higher category that is called as prehypertension. Here, systolic pressure ranges between 120 to 139 and diastolic between 80 to 89. Then we come to hypertension stage 1, wherein the systolic pressure ranges between 140 to 159 and diastolic pressure between 90 and 99. Then finally, we have stage 2 hypertension, where systolic pressure ranges between 160 to 100. 79 
and diastolic pressure between 100 to 109. And the highest, that means hypertension crisis. Here, the systolic pressure is greater than or equal to 180 and diastolic pressure greater than and equal to 110. Now, let us see what is mean by high blood pressure. High blood pressure actually is a condition in which the heart exerts more force to pump the same quantity of blood within the same time. And over the years, it can harden the arteries, thereby weakening our heart. So now let us see what are the factors which affect blood pressure. Most of the people do not realize their blood pressure is constantly changing minute by minute in response to variation of mood, activity, body position, etc. In fact, Simple changes can cause blood pressure to fluctuate between 5 and 40 millimeter of mercury. Let us see some of the conditions which leads to fluctuation of blood pressure. One condition is blood pressure cuff is too small. Usually blood pressure cuff are of variety of sizes. And when the size of blood pressure cuff, particularly which is meant for a child, if it is used by an adult, then it will result to fluctuation of the value. And studies have shown that using too small blood pressure cuff can cause an individual's systolic blood pressure measured to increase of 10 to 40 mmHg. That means it can make an increase of 10 to 40 millimeter of mercury. Other condition is blood pressure cuff use over the clothing. When having our blood pressure measured, the cuff should always be placed directly on our arms. Studies have shown that clothing can make a fluctuation in the systolic blood pressure from 10 to 50 millimeter of mercury. Another third condition is not resting three to five minutes. The subject on whom the measurement is to be taken should relax comfortably for nearly three to five minutes before a reading is taken. Any activity such as eating, exercise, can affect systolic blood pressure by about 10 to 20 millimeter of mercury. Then another point is that while taking measurement, we should be very much cautious about our posture. The arms, back, and the feet if they are not supported, it results to fluctuation. Then, talking at the time of taking measurement may also lead to an increase of systolic BP by about 10 to 15 millimeter of mercury. Again, smoking, Alcohol and caffeine consumption raise the blood pressure. So the subject should abstain from such food at least 30 minutes before taking the measurement. Apart from all these conditions, the atmospheric temperature, particularly blood pressure tends to increase when the subject is exposed to low temperature. So it should be recorded under room temperature condition so that 
the desired blood pressure is often. Another condition is full bladder. When the urinary bladder is filled, the blood pressure could increase by about 10 to 15 millimeter of mercury. Again, individuals age, sex also affect BP. Among the children, the normal range are lower than the adult and depends on their height. As adults is increased, systolic pressure tends to rise and diastolic pressure tends to fall. In the elderly persons, blood pressure tends to be above the normal adult range. An individual's blood pressure varies with obesity, stress, sedentary lifestyle, hereditary, excess salt intake, exercise, emotional reactions, sleep, digestion, and time of day. So we have now come to know some of the theoretical background of blood pressure, the factors affecting blood pressure. Now let us come to the practical part. First of all, let us start with procedure for measuring blood pressure. Systemic arterial blood pressure can be measured by using two methods, namely direct method and secondly, indirect method. Direct method involves the introduction of a cannula into an artery and therefore is unsafe, inconvenient and involves high risk of infection. Therefore, this method is used only for research purposes, particularly in measuring blood pressure of animals. So, practically, for an effective measurement, we use indirect method. There are two ways of measuring blood pressure using indirect method. Number one, through palpation. And number two, through osculatory method. The latter one, that is osculatory method, is more frequently used as it is more reliable. Osculatory method was introduced by a Russian physician, Korotkov, in the year 1905. Let us see what are the apparatus required for measuring blood pressure using this osculatory method. First of all, we require a spigmo manometer. This is a spigmo manometer. It has a graduated glass tube. Mercury reservoir is here. Then there is a lock here. This is the lock. Then we have a rubber pump. This is the rubber pump. And here a valve is fitted. And we have two rubber tubes. Then we have a rubber bag. This is a rubber bag. Rubber bag is inside actually. This is inside. Here, it is inside rubber bag and cloth envelope. Then the, another instrument, another apparatus required for measuring blood pressure is stethoscope. This is stethoscope. Well, we use these two apparatus, spigmo manometer and stethoscope for measuring blood pressure 
in ascularity method. Now let us come to the procedure of measuring blood pressure. So first of all, allow the subject to sit comfortably in a chair with his back and arm as well as feet supported. The feet should be uncrossed or otherwise the subject can lie in shopping position for about five minutes. The cuff of the Spigmo manometer is wrapped around the upper arm, about 2.5 to 3 centimeter above the level of the heart. You see, the level of the heart is here, and this cuff should be wrapped at this upper arm by about 2.5 to 3 centimeter above the heart level. Then chest piece of the stethoscope should be placed over the arm, medial to the tendon of bicep. That means here, medial to the tendon of bicep, where pulsation of brachial artery, a very, very important artery, brachial artery are felt. So if it is not capped or placed, at the brachial artery, the pulse cell will not be felt. Now, next step is inflate the cuff in such a manner that the pressure in it is well above the systolic blood pressure. That is around up to 200 mm. In doing so, the brachial artery gets occluded by the cuff and no sound can be heard with the stethoscope. The pressure of the cuff is lowered. The pressure is gradually and slowly released. Until we hear a tapping sound. So the moment the tapping sound is heard, that is the systolic pressure, and we record it. Then, slowly and slowly, the sound will become more distant and more distant, and finally, it will disappear. Record the millimeter of mercury in the glass tube at that moment when the sound disappeared that gives the diastolic pressure. So we have recorded systolic blood pressure and we have also recorded diastolic blood pressure. Then express the blood pressure as systolic blood pressure over diastolic blood pressure. That means SBP by DBP, millimeter of mercury. We can take two or three readings. After an interval of about three to four minutes each. And again, take the average of those two to three readings. This can give us an average blood pressure. Now, we have come to know how blood pressure is measured. Well, we come across a number of errors if a proper precaution is not taken care of. So let us see some of the precautions that should be taken care of while measuring blood pressure. Number one, the cuff should be properly wrapped. The cuff should be actually 2.5 to 3 centimeter above the level of heart. Then the subject should not talk. Then the cuff tubing should lie over the inner side of the arm. We should not apply a strong pressure over the artery 
as it may cause obstruction. The cup should not be inflated for long period. As and when the measurement is over, it should be, the air should be removed. For any suspected hypertensive individual, the cup pressure should be brought above 200 mm of Hg at the beginning. So this is how blood pressure is measured. Now let us come to the next part of our lecture that is on pulse rate. First of all, let us try to know what is pulse. Pulse is the rhythmic contraction and expansion of arteries corresponding to its heartbeat. It is the surge of blood that is pushed through the arteries when the heart beats. Well, then what is red? Red is a pace at which certain activity is performed. So therefore, we have come to know what is pulse. We have come to know what is red. So pulse red means simply it is the red at which our heart beats. It is also therefore called heart red. In other words, it is the number of heart beats per minute. By measuring and knowing the pulse rate, we can know the status of our heart and tell us how well the heart is working. Frequently, checking of our pulse rate at rest during exercise or immediately after the exercise can give us important information about general health of an individual and overall fitness level. Therefore, observing our heart rate or pulse rate now and then is very, very important for assessing the status of our health as well as heart. Now let us come to the range of pulse rate because pulse rate vary on the basis of certain criteria, on the basis of certain factors. Well, the average pulse rate ranges between 70 to 100 for individual below 18 years of age. And for adults, it ranges from 60 to 100. However, in normal conditions, some of the athletes have below 40 pulse rate. That means 40 heartbeats per minute. And in newborn, it is as high as above 140. The maximum heart rate or the highest possible pulse rate can be estimated by using a formula. That formula is 220 minus personal age, which is equal to predict that maximum heart rate. Then we have another target heart rate. This is 60 to 85 percent of the maximum heart rate. This is usually accomplished through exercise. Well, now let us come to the factors affecting pulse rate. Our pulse rate can be affected because of certain factors. One such factor is body weight. Not only body weight, as gender, activities and exercise affect the pulse rate. Increase in body weight results to increase in pulse rate. Younger age individuals have higher pulse rate. Women have higher pulse rate than males. 
see the sexual variation pulse rate increases just after the food during sex and exercise as well at which part of the body we can feel our pulse pulse can be felt at wrist we have a radial artery here so pulse can be felt here then at the same time we can feel it at the femoral artery at the groin then posterior tibial artery at the ankle joint as well as brachial artery inside the elbow how do we measure pulse rate let us see pulse rate is simply counted by putting slight pressure on the artery in the body where the pulsation can be felt pulse rate is counted by putting slight pressure on the artery in the body where pulsation can be felt the most convenient location is the wrist that means here we can feel the radial pulse now let us come to the procedure for measuring pulse rate hold the hand of the subject in palm up position like this not like this palm up position exert slight pressure with the pads of your index finger and middle finger to the location of the pulse just below the wrist crease this is the wrist crease and at the base of the thumb so with the help of these two pads of index finger and middle finger we locate the pulse just below the wrist crease below the thumb like this the pulse is felt just like a rhythmic thumping count the pulse for 15 seconds using a stopwatch or a clock or an ordinary watch with a second hand thereafter after recording the number of pulse for 15 seconds simply multiply the number by 4 then we get number of counts for a minute that means number of counts per minute so in such a way we can count pulse rate of an individual but we have certain tips or certain points to be noted never use thumb to look at the pulse why because there is a pulse in the thumb and the pulse in the thumb can interfere when trying to look at pulse on the subject as a student of anthropology more particularly physiological anthropology one should know how to measure pulse rate and how to measure blood pressure so by knowing the procedure of measuring blood pressure and pulse rate you can very easily measure and determine the pulse rate of an individual maybe your family members maybe your friends or maybe of a patient which is a uh, very very useful for identifying the condition or the status of our heart as well as the status of health which can be revealed through blood pressure and pulse rate